Hi, I'm Heidi Johansson and thank you for joining us. We're here today to discuss a video which was released by Campus Alberta entitled Shooter on Campus, Know You Can Survive. We are also joined by three panelists who are going to help us navigate and examine the educational components of this video. But prior to us introducing them, let's have a look at the video. You're about to watch an educational video about a disturbing subject, how you should respond in an active shooter situation. An active shooter is an individual shooting at people, usually at random, in a populated area. The likelihood you will ever encounter this type of situation is extremely remote. In fact, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than be the target of an active shooter. So why then are we asking you to view this video? Well, first, we think it could benefit you no matter what risks you may face because it encourages you to think through various emergency scenarios and ask yourself, what would I do in that situation? Second, people often ask for this information. Media coverage of active shooters anywhere in the world causes anxiety, and many people just want to know what they should do if it were to happen to them. And finally, as unlikely as it is, it could happen, whether on your campus or anywhere else you travel in your lifetime. Please take a few minutes to watch the video. Listen for the messages of get out, hide, fight. Who knows, one day it could save your life. There are many partners who work together to make your campus safe. The likelihood of an active shooter occurrence on your campus is extremely remote. However, when the unthinkable happens, it's essential to be prepared to act, just like you would in a fire. Every second counts. Not sure if that's gunfire? What else is happening? Check for crowd reactions, shouts, screams. Trust your intuition. If it sounds like it could be a gun, react as though it is. Planning could save your life. Be familiar with your environment. Knowing your options ahead of time means you can act with a clear mind when fear and adrenaline kick in. Scan and assess your situation. Consider your options. Act. Active shooter situations are unpredictable and evolve quickly. You will need to react fast. If you believe you can escape safely, do so immediately. When you are safe, call 911. There's a shooter on campus. People coming out. Where's the shooter? I think he's in the library. Okay, get behind our truck. Follow the directions of police. Choose a safe exit. 
don't attract the shooter's attention. Protect yourself first before helping others. Find a secure room or space. Shut the lights. Turn off the lights. Everybody Cover windows. Get out of the line of fire. Lock the door and barricade it if you can. Someone's shooting. We're going to lock down. We're going to be safe. Don't worry. Improvise. Stay out of the line of fire. Get under desks or behind tables. Mute your phone. Be quiet. Wait for police to come to you. Okay, you run silence your phones. Turn off the lights. Lock and barricade doors. Stay out of the line of fire. Be quiet. Please remember, we're not going to be in this When you can't get out or hide, your last resort may be to fight. You, turn off the lights. Everybody. Whether you are alone or with a group, be ready to fight for your life. Commit to aggressive action. Mentally prepare yourself to physically fight. It would be a fight for your life. It's your decision. Disarm and incapacitate the shooter any way you can. Improvise weapons from nearby objects. Commit to an aggressive physical attack. Stop the threat. If you are safe in your hiding place, stay there and let police come to you. It's the police service. Announce your presence. Remember, the primary duty of police is to stop the shooter and then tend to casualties. Okay. What we need you to do now is just follow our direction. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to get you to exit the room nice and slowly, one at a time with your hands. Do whatever you can to get through this. Odds are you will never face the unthinkable, but if you do, keep the odds in your favor. Okay, you next. Planning can save your life. Having options empowers you and helps control your fear. Be familiar with your environment. Assess your situation. Make a decision and act. Get out, hide, fight. We're okay. We're all okay. Welcome back. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panelists. First of all, we have John Slater, who is the CEO of the Commissioners, the Northern Alberta Division. We also have Cameron McCoy. He is the president of the Students Association for McEwen University. And we also have Barbara Van Ingen. She is the um, registered psychologist as well as the <laughs> Dean of Students for um, Concordia College, University of Alberta. First question we'd like to actually ask is to John. John, what is the likelihood um, that this type of an event of this magnitude could happen in Edmonton or on our Alberta campuses? Very slim. You've got a greater chance of being hit by lightning uh, 
uh, and the streets, you know, driving on the streets are more dangerous than being in a situation like this. And Cameron, our, my next question is to you. Being the um, president of your student body, has your um, student body uh, come with any type of concern regarding the possibility of this happening on your campus? Uh, I think there's always a natural concern that uh, with the student body of a large size that there's a possibility of an incident. For the most part, though, they know they're safe. We have a fantastic security team, and we've never had an incident at McEwenU. So there's just the general awareness to make sure our students are prepared in case something would happen. Barbara, um, is this uh, the university demographic the appropriate age to be viewing this video? Like, are we instilling fear? Uh, I think that's one of the concerns around the video is that it could create some fear because it is a very graphic video, but this is actually the very ideal age to share the message with um, because not only is the risk uh, potentially happening on a university campus, but we've seen it happen uh, in malls, in movie theaters across North America, so it's just good information for people to have in general. Right, that was my next question to you. Is this, is this, are the techniques um, displayed in this video um, enabling or empowering students of junior high and elementary ages to use those steps. The great thing about the video is uh, the message is very simple. It's three steps, right? It's either um, if you can run and get out, get out, and if you can't hide, and if you have to in that last resort to defend yourself. And so that's a really easy message for younger kids to get as well. So I think the, the video is very relevant for junior high age kids as well. Right, right. Okay, back to you, John. Um, can this video be used um, as a tool for scenarios outside of the school setting? For example, a mall or a hotel on vacation? Oh, most certainly. Uh, we've been using the Homeland Security equivalent of, uh, of this video for several years with our clients and that's in the workforce or in the workplace. Uh, it's in, normally in conjunction with violence in the workplace. And then here's this five and a half minute video about what to do in the case of an active shooter. And again, as, as you said, it's very simple. Uh, run, hide, fight. You can, you, can, you can get your arms around that and it means something. Right, this is very different from a negotiating tactic or a talking down of the shooter, right? This is a very um, empowering message. The police forces determined after Columbine they can't sit back and wait the way they used to. Uh, so in this case, this tells people you've got to do something and this is what you should do. And at least it gives them something to, to act on if they find themselves in a situation like that right. rather than just sit there. Right. Cameron, um, do you think that this would be a benefit to your student body, this video? Oh, definitely. I think we've shown this video to around 100 students so far, just as a test. And um, we wanted to integrate it through workshops. And we saw that over 90% of students said this video was a very successful, a very empowering video. And it was something that gave them the tools to really know what to do in a situation like this. I think a lot of them came out of high school that are used to just wait in the classroom, just wait. and. But now it's, it's really about empowering. It's about thinking on your feet. If you're in a library, what are you going to do? And we're seeing students really enjoying that. They, they have a lot of different techniques for how they can protect themselves. And it makes them feel empowered that they don't have to wait for someone to save them. They can actually save themselves. Right, right. So in the event that something should happen, God forbid something mm -hmm. should happen like that, what would each of your roles be um, in this event? So for, we'll start with you, John. I, I would suggest that uh, the security services role would be to identify where the situation is and be prepared to direct the law enforcement response. Uh, beyond that, it would be the uh, school's responsibility to get the message out. Right. And how about you, Cameron? What would your role be? Um, really, during the event itself, it's not my role to ensure the student safety. That is up to our security team and uh, EPS. But my role does come in prior and, before and afterwards of the fact and that we want to put in preventative scenarios so that mental health on campus is kept at bay and that we can make sure our students don't have to go to a situation like this. And after that, of course, is that we're providing students a service to ensure they have uh, that they feel safe coming back to school, that they feel safe on campus, and that their mental health issues are dealt with. We really try and promote a culture of uh, preventative health on McEwen's campus, and really that comes down to, that's where my role really comes in place. Thank you. And Barb, you actually have a two-pronged role as a dean of students as well as um, a mm -hmm. registered psychologist. 
Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? So much like John and Cameron said, uh, universities have really terrific security services that would be the, the people that would be responding right in that moment. Um, and my role is really twofold, as you said. Um, and as John mentioned, we, or sorry, as Cameron mentioned, we have uh, proactive steps that we take beforehand to hopefully prevent these sorts of situations from happening. So at Concordia, for example, we have what we call our behavioral support and intervention team. Uh, and that's really a repository for receiving reports about distressing or disturbing behaviors. So hopefully that would prevent something from happening. But in the event something does happen, then my role would be uh, in helping students debrief afterwards and then to process the, uh, the trauma. Right, right. So for each of you, what would be the most important uh, component of this video to remember? If you could choose one thing, what would that be? John? You've got to take some form of action. You can't just sit there. Uh, I really think it's that you're in charge of your life. This is up to you. You have to make sure you're safe. You have to make sure you get out. You have to protect yourself. It's, it's really about empowering yourself to act in a situation when you need to act. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would echo that. I think the message really is about uh, knowing what you're going to do before a situation arises, because in that moment, that's not the time to be thinking about how you're going to handle the situation. So much like we have students practice fire drills, we have to have them practice this so that they're in that moment, if it ever, God forbid, happens, that they know how to respond. And that's a great point, that you, we talk about fire drills. Uh, when I lived in Virginia, my daughter in junior elementary school, would go through fire drills, hurricane drills, bomb drills, and active shooter drills in her elementary school. Mm -hmm. And that was just standard training. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, getting back to what you're saying, Barb, do you think that that would become part of this video, would become part of the safety regulations in schools, in the districts? Like, it will be like a fire drill. I think so. I think we're definitely moving in that direction. Um, at Concordia, for example, we have uh, an emergency response plan, and part of that is what to do in an active shooter situation. And so um, we're currently discussing the various times of the year that we'd have that conversation with students, whether it's right at orientation time or at set times throughout the school year. So I, I do see that um, the public school systems will be looking at building that into their repertoire. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Cameron? Do you think that's going to become part of yeah, I think we're already seeing it happen in high schools, junior highs, and I think it's going to continue to go up into universities. I think this video is a great start for empowering students, and I think uh, as students get used to this is part of campus life, is that we're going to learn about the different safety measures when it comes to lockdowns. Uh, it's important. It's a natural step. Barb, getting back to the instilling of fear, we're, that's a concern when watching this video. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there would be another way to relay this message other than the video. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think the message has to grab people's emotions to make them think about how to prepare in that situation because if that situation happens it is a very fearful situation and so uh, there's just really no other way to express that message through a, a softer, gentler uh, sort of method. I think um, the way it's done is the ideal way to get that message out. Great, great. Yeah. Add to that yes, quickly, Heidi, is what we've been doing at McEwen is we hold workshops. So instead of you just seeing the video and then going your separate way, it's about an hour long process. So you can see the video, we talk about the video, about why we're showing you, why, why the video is designed a certain way. And then students aren't walking away maybe misunderstanding the video, they're walking away feeling empowered. They had all their questions answered, they're not afraid anymore, they know the security team is, has, is ideal on campus so they will be safe. But now they, they kind of can take comfort that they've learned a little bit more about how to keep themselves safe. Right, the mm -hmm. message of preparedness. Definitely, not fear. Right, right, okay. Well, I wanted to thank your pan this panel. Thank you very much to John Slaters, again, CEO Commissioner of the Northern Alberta Division, <laughs> and Cameron McCoy, thank President you. of the Students Association for uh, Grant McEwen, McEwen University, thank you. as well as Barbara Van Ingen, uh, Registered Psychologist, and Dean of Students for Concordia University College of Alberta. Thank you as well to our viewers for joining us on this discussion, which we hope has been both informative and educational. You're about to watch an educational video about a disturbing subject, how you should respond in an active shooter situation. An active shooter is an individual shooting at people, usually at random, in a populated area.
the likelihood you will ever encounter this type of situation is extremely remote. In fact, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than be the target of an active shooter. So why then are we asking you to view this video? Well, first, we think it could benefit you no matter what risks you may face because it encourages you to think through various emergency scenarios and ask yourself, what would I do in that situation? Second, people often ask for this information. Media coverage of active shooters anywhere in the world causes anxiety, and many people just want to know what they should do if it were to happen to them. And finally, as unlikely as it is, it could happen, whether on your campus or anywhere else you travel in your lifetime. Please take a few minutes to watch the video. Listen for the messages of get out, hide, fight. Who knows, one day it could save your life. There are many partners who work together to make your campus safe. The likelihood of an active shooter occurrence on your campus is extremely remote. However, when the unthinkable happens, it's essential to be prepared to act, just like you would in a fire. Every second counts. Not sure if that's gunfire? What else is happening? Check for crowd reactions, shouts, screams. Trust your intuition. If it sounds like it could be a gun, react as though it is. Planning could save your life. Be familiar with your environment. Knowing your options ahead of time means you can act with a clear mind when fear and adrenaline kick in. Scan and assess your situation. Consider your options. Act. Active shooter situations are unpredictable and evolve quickly. You will need to react fast. If you believe you can escape safely, do so immediately. When you are safe, call 911. There's a shooter on campus. People coming out. Where's the shooter? I think he's in the library. Okay, get behind our truck. Follow the directions of police. Choose a safe exit. Don't attract the shooter's attention. Protect yourself first before helping others. Find a secure room or space. Shut the lights. Turn off the lights. Everybody Cover get windows. Out get out of the line of fire. Lock the door and barricade it if you can. Someone's shooting. We're going to lock down. We're going to be safe. Don't worry. Improvise. Stay out of the line of fire. 
get under desks or behind tables. Mute your phone. Be quiet. Wait for police to come to you. Turn off the lights. Lock and barricade doors. Stay out of the line of fire. Be quiet. Please remember, we're not going to be in this When you can't get out or hide, your last resort may be to fight. You, turn off the lights. Wait, get under the desk. Everybody. Whether you are alone or with a group, be ready to fight for your life. Commit to aggressive action. Mentally prepare yourself to physically fight. It would be a fight for your life. It's your decision. Disarm and incapacitate the shooter any way you can. Improvise weapons from nearby objects. Commit to an aggressive physical attack. Stop the threat. If you are safe in your hiding place, stay there and let police come to you. It's the police service. Announce your presence. Remember, the primary duty of police is to stop the shooter and then tend to casualties. Okay. What we need you to do now is just follow our direction. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to get you to exit the room nice and slowly, one at a time with your hands. Do whatever you can to get through this. Odds are you will never face the unthinkable. But if you do, keep the odds in your favor. Okay, you next. Planning can save your life. Having options empowers you and helps control your fear. Be familiar with your environment. Assess your situation. Make a decision and act. Get out, hide, fight. We're okay. We're all okay.